I'm not sure if this is a case of art imitating life or the other way around, but I guess you just can't make stuff like this up. I know that in some of the articles that I was using to make people aware of this Ebola outbreak, there was this advertisement for the hot zone with Juliana Margulies. Now, I honest to God did not know about this. I really did not know a thing about this. Um, I haven't watched Nat Geo in a long time. I don't watch a lot of TV anyway. But doing some basic research into it, it's about a real story. This isn't like Z Nation or The Walking Dead or something, you know, Plants vs. Zombies or whatever. This is about a real event that occurred in 1989, and I had forgotten about this. I was very early in my Army training at this time, but... Juliana Margulies plays the woman on the right. She was a, a U.S. Army doctor that had to fight tooth and nail to get into this area that apparently there was 400 monkeys that had been brought to the United States and they were infected with Ebola. Now in 89, Ebola was still something that was not in our consciousness 1989 was also prior to the internet, prior to cell phones, most cell phones. Um, so it wasn't something where th the news of this got out. But had this been released, had this woman on the right not done what she did, we could have seen devastation, absolute devastation on the East Coast. And I thought I would share with you um, a small snippet from an interview that she did just so that you can get an idea of what's being talked about here. So the hot zone is based on a New York times bestselling book um, that depicts a time in 1989 when Ebola, which is a, um, a devastating uh, uh, pathogen hit U S soil, something that we had never seen before ever. That was a foreign, that's, that happened in Africa. That doesn't happen here. Um, when it was detected on U.S. soil by the character I play, Nancy Jacks, who um, is a colonel in the Army, who's the top of her field. She's a pathologist. She works in biohazard level four labs. And it tracks the story of her trying to stop the spread of Ebola, which has wiped out villages. Um, this happened uh, in Virginia, and it would have wiped out six million people in D.C., faster than you can shut down the highways. And her job was to euthanize 400 monkeys in this monkey house in Reston, Virginia, um, get as much tissue as she could to do the scientific work um, to find, they're trying to find a cure or a vaccine. There is no cure. There is no vaccine. Now there is a vaccine for Ebola, but not Ebola Zaire. Mm -hmm. Ebola Zaire has a 90% fatality rate. Her teacher played by the stunning, gorgeous, funny Liam Cunningham, um, has sort of been chastised outside of the um, USAMRID, which is the army base that she works out of, for um, causing too much alarm about Ebola because he was in Africa in the 70s, 1976, and he saw what it did. He saw devastated villages. When I say devastated, I don't mean people were sad. I mean, there was no one there. Right. It was Completely burned to the out. ground. Yeah. Wiped out. Yeah. He lived through that. And so he was thought of as an alarmist. And when she sees what she sees under the microscope, she knows there's only one person that can help her, and that's him. Mm -hmm. And and you see this world that they're up against. No one, you know, no one wants him around, mm -hmm. and no one's going to listen to her. And as of August, over 850 people have died in the Democratic Republic of Congo because of Ebola. Mm -hmm. So where are we? Yeah. And now we can travel faster anywhere. It's global. This is not a singular country's issue. This is right. a global issue. Right. So I found that doing this show was so important, so much bigger than all of us. Um, and it's why I, I love partnering with Nat Geo because they are a global community, mm -hmm. right? Nat Geo is in every corner of the world. Yeah. And when they told me actually that it was going to air in 171 countries, I was like, <laughs> how? <laughs> And they said we're National Geographic. National Geographic. We're in every yeah, corner exactly. of the world. Exactly. Iconic. Right? Yeah. And so I thought it was such a great um, partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I'm not, sadly, 
I don't have a scientific mind. I was never good at science in school. It didn't interest me, really. Yeah, girl, same. I, I mean, <laughs> if, right. Important, if we yeah. were, we wouldn't right. be here. Right. right. Um, I would be out, hopefully, saving the mm-hmm. world. <laughs> so my meager um, abilities as an actress is to be able to shine a spotlight on something that I have no power over otherwise. In what way were you most impacted personally? Well, interestingly enough, I actually was not one of those um, people that ever really cared about germs. I grew up with um, a homeopathic mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have had my vaccines, but um, if I had a headache, my mother would massage my feet kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's have some herbal tea with honey if you have a sore throat um, to build up my immune system. So I was one of those people who... um, you know, when my kid was born, if something fell on the floor, I'm like, mm-hmm. 10 second roll, you're fine. Build mm-hmm. up your immune system. After this show, I now travel, even in my evening purse, with hand sanitizer. <laughs> I am constantly washing my hands. Um, I'm way too aware. And this is something that the the doctor who trained me in the lab, for all the lab stuff is actually Nancy Jax's real life nephew. Mm-hmm. He is one of the top um uh, infectious disease specialists in our country. Mm -hmm. And he told me, and he was in Sierra Leone in 2015 when there was a huge Ebola Zaire outbreak. Mm -hmm. And he told me, you, you ask any infectious disease specialist, none of them touch their face. Mm. Now watch normal people. They will touch their face over a thousand thousand times, times. a thousand times. And he said, we never get sick because maybe once every six years I'll get the flu. Right. But now you'll watch. Okay. So this is what's going on. This is the real deal. And what was happening in 1989 was the real deal. So I thought when this airs, it's 9 o'clock, 27 May, Monday. It's coming Monday, uh, 9 o'clock at night, Nat Geo. Um, I'm going to watch it, and I'm probably going to do videos about each episode. There's six episodes um, to it, so it's like a little mini series deal. But they're talking about this more and more. The more I look into... Um, finding links for you guys, the more pop up that I haven't seen before. In my most recent video, um, if you look down in the comment section, I have pinned at the top 10, 10 different links from USA Today, Nat Geo, Stat News, BBC, Stripes, The Intercept, all sorts. But there's one particular one in this video I would like to share with you. Um, And it has to do with a different topic, but it's related to this, and it's stunning when you read it, and when, I shouldn't say when, if this gets out of control more, this decision that I'm going to show you here is going to reverberate throughout history. This is about the argument between China and Taiwan about China wanting Taiwan to be a part of China and doesn't want anyone else in the world to recognize them as independent. Taiwan offered $98 million to help the fight in Africa against Ebola. But they rejected, the WHO, under pressure from China, rejected the offer of the money. And one of the biggest problems there now is that they don't have the financing to fight it. It says, often overlooked, however, are China's non-military efforts to isolate Taiwan, which Beijing hopes will compel Taipei's surrender without a fight. These efforts were on full display in recent days. For the third straight year, China has excluded Taiwan from participating in the World Health Organization's biggest annual gathering. Taiwan was able to send observers to the assembly, but admits rising tensions between Beijing and Taipei, China has launched a concerted effort to block the island from admittance. China's campaign is not only morally outrageous, but also dangerous. Under Chinese pressure, the World Health Organization rejected Taiwan's offer to help in combating the Ebola epidemic in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, our president announced that we would donate, I guess I was a little high there, 1 million U.S. to combat Ebola. But this donation, even this donation, was not accepted by the World Health Organization. The $98 million number is down here. VOA noted that the World Health Organization estimates it needs $98 million to run its operations to combat Ebola, but faces a shortfall of about $63 million. So this little game that's getting played in the world with China and Taiwan and all this is having real-world effects. 
in this article here, and this is another one I'll give you a link to, it talks about how the violence is causing this to spread in a way that they can't track it. And I know I've said this before. But I'll give you these links. And when you find this particular one, you look at these numbers, these are just what they know is reported. And they emphasize that uh, there's so many that aren't, they have no idea. Now, I brought this up just as a basic reference. You can pause this and look at it. Just so you have something to look at, so you don't have to go try to find to dig up the chart somewhere. You can just come here and and you can tell. Now, people have asked me, what can you do? What can we do as um, a normal person in America to do the very best we can to com combat? I'm going to give you, and I'm going to stress this, my opinion, my anecdotal opinion, because I've been asked. What I'm going to tell you isn't a silver bullet. It's not going to 100% fix it. It's not going to be something that is going to be either this or that. Either it's totally right or totally wrong. It's going to be a mishmash of issues that if you do them all, you'll give yourself the best chance. But it's not ideal. And every one of them has holes. Now, I know a lot of people are going to take issue with this. This having your groceries delivered thing. Yes, people are going to be involved in the process of delivering your groceries, but it cuts out the amount of people. And I don't mean the services that go to your local grocery store. They're just adding one person into the, the chain. What I'm talking about is you can go to Amazon and you can just have the stuff put in a box and sent to your front door. No human involved. Now, that reduces the amount of human beings in between you and your stuff. It's not perfect but going to the grocery store you have to deal with the carts you have to deal with the doors you have to deal with that little table where you're set your stuff when they're checking your stuff out every possible chance you can have to not be in a place where somebody could have touched something is you know one one little bit of help now you can have this or you can have this you can have this or you can have this and i'll just leave that there for you now, this is probably where I'm going to make a lot of people mad, but I'm just going to leave it be. My opinion, my opinion only. There are a lot of snake oil salesmen out there, and I'm seeing it in my comments, especially with this stuff called colloidal silver. If you want to take colloidal silver, go right ahead. If you're going out there and you're telling people that it's some kind of thing that'll kill this, that, and the other, and, and it's a cure for Ebola, or you're not going to get Ebola if you take it, horseshit. Not true, and it's part of a blocked words section now that I have set up. So if you're going to try to push colloidal silver in my comment section, sorry for your luck, not going to happen. Okay, in case those of you don't know what it is, basically they just run a charge through a couple of silver rods that are in a distilled water um, bottle, and the, the silver breaks down, and you're basically just drinking the metal. Don't be this guy. And don't be this guy, because he drank a bunch of colloidal silver. True story. Turned him purplish silver. It's this logic fallacy called anecdotal evidence. That this happened and this happened over here, so therefore it must work for everyone everywhere. Like I said when I started this, this is my anecdotal opinion. Telling you what's going on in the world is one thing. Telling you how to react to it, that's an entirely different thing. But like she said, carry hand sanitizer. It's simple. It's easy. It doesn't cost a lot. And just be diligent. Go to the CDC website and see what they say about transmission. This should tell you all you need to know about transmission. This is another article here um, that I was... Uh, listening to her more in depth. Um, you can go to YouTube and find Juliana Margulies, the hot zone, shocking true story of Ebola outbreak. Uh, it's out there. I mean, it's not something where this is not a, not a real occurring thing right now, just because it hasn't worked its way into the current administration's private news network or the one that is dedicated 
to destroying the current administration, those are the two major news networks in the United States right now, doesn't mean it's not real. There's a world outside of our world. And uh, and like she said, you know, the, the series, this Hot Zone series, is going to be on in a hundred and something odd countries. So let's maybe make a plan. We'll uh, We'll watch this. Maybe I could figure out a way we could somehow do a live and watch it together. Who knows? Um, but pretty amazing story. So I guess I'll leave it there 15 and a half minutes and I will, what I'm going to try to do is put the links in the first comment or the top comment. There's this weird hiccup going on with YouTube right now. When you put external links into descriptions, they demonetize your video and they shadow ban it. And this is too important for that. So anyway, we will leave that there. Uh, Like I said, pray for each other, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.